Harmony Independent Presbyterian Church. We're so glad you came out to join us to worship our risen Lord and Savior this morning. And we want to start off with a word of prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, we're just so thankful, so glad to be in your house this morning, Lord. And come in here this morning to serve you with gladness, Lord. I just pray that our worship service, Lord, would be a sweet aroma to you, Lord, and you would bless our service, Lord, through your presence. Lord, speak to us today, Lord. We all desperately need a touch from you, Lord. And so does our world today that we live in, Lord. We thank you for all you're doing in our life each and every day, Lord. And Lord, we love you. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 And again, welcome. Uh, starting off with our... Uh, announcement. So this Wednesday night we finish up our little three-part series on uh, God's will. And starting this Wednesday night, we're going to go a little deeper and we're going to talk about creation. And I'm going to use some of the stuff that uh, was given to me through Liberty University and recommended through Liberty University about creation. I am a young uh, creationist, meaning that the earth is young, like 10,000 years old. You know, then we have evolution that says you just add a few million or tree and it takes care of anything, right? <laughs> so the study we're going to be doing is called Is Genesis History? Question mark. Is Genesis actual history? So it's awesome and I know that everyone will enjoy it. It'll probably last about six weeks. Uh, everything goes well. So look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. I also want to thank our church. Our church family and all those that helped out with Mr. Thomas Mitchell's uh, service. I think it was beautiful service. And Buddy did a fantastic job, one of the family members. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for, for all they did to make that special. Miss Francis did send me a text, I believe it was when, maybe Thursday morning, I believe it was. Said she had moved with her sister. Um, and she's going to be living with her sister. so. I know that brings her great comfort. So let's please remember the Mitchell family in our prayers. Are there any other announcements uh, <coughs> need to be made right now? <coughs> like I'm forgetting something. Okay. If not, we'll look at our birthdays and anniversaries. Of course, today is actually Robbie's birthday. We've done some had birthday to him four times. <laughs> and one time the <laughs> Sunday school, he covered. Um, but you can see Matthews is on the 9th, and then uh, we have Rob's on the 20th, and Sean, wow, he's going to be a year older, and Mr. Harry on the 21st. Are there any other birthdays that we don't have on our calendar for February? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> and we'll move on into our prayer time. You can see our prayer list. There are many on there. Do we have any ads or updates to our prayer list this morning? Yes, ma'am. Carolyn Heisel. She says Edith Car Edith Carr's daughter. Oh. We loved in this church, but it's one of those the church closest to her, but she has been very sick for several weeks. And what was her name again? Carolyn Heisel. H Y S E L. She was originally a car. Okay. Okay, any others? That's her right. Miss Muriel seems to be getting better every day, right, Mr. Robert? She was here for the uh, funeral. And continue to remember her in your prayers. And Mr. Barnhill as well. And any others? If not, who would like to pray <coughs> for our prayers this morning? Great, can I get you to do that? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this day, and we just uh, ask that you lift up everyone on this prayer list and uh, bless them with each of their individual names and uh, individual needs that they have. Lord, just comfort them and uh, be with them and just know that our prayers are going to them, uh, to you for them, Lord, and just continue to be with them. And we ask all these things in your son's holy name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Greg. Let's stand for our call to worship. Our responsive reading comes from Psalms 119. Yeah, when I first got up here, I was trying to make sure I had the right bullets, and I had the wrong one one time. <laughs> it is the 29th, it is Sunday. <laughs> Lord, you are mine. I promise to obey your words. With all my heart, I will want your blessings. 
be merciful as you promised. I ponder the direction of my life, and I turn to follow your laws. I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. Evil people try to drag me into sin, but I am firmly anchored to your instructions. I am ready to anyone who fears you, anyone who obeys your commands. O oh Lord, your unfailing love fills the earth. Teach me your decrees. Amen. Our hymn of praise is holy, holy, holy. So based on the scriptures, your sins have been forgiven.
faith in using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Your mommy's pants. Your shirt looks 
suck your mommy's hands. <laughs> How are you guys today? We're so glad you came today. Are you glad you came today? Do you like to sing? Do you like to sing? Do you like to worship God? Do you like to worship God? You do? Do you like to sing? All right, today I've got a bag. I tell you, I wish I sure had some of that check mix we had last week because it was good, wasn't it? But what do I have today? Can anybody tell me what this bag contains? What's this? What's this? Have you, have you ever had a boo-boo and you needed a band-aid? Have you ever had a boo-boo? Have you ever had a boo-boo? Do you have a boo-boo now? No, you're, good. you're healed today. Oh, a little bit. Okay, how about you? Do you have a boo-boo today? How about you, Dakota? You got one on your mouth, don't you? He fell the other day running. Well, I got a band-aid today. What does that say? I'll tell you what, I'm, it's harder than you think to write on a fabric band-aid. What does that say? Can you read that? Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. <gasps> yes, you did get that. says Jesus saves. So who has a boo-boo? Dakota, I'm going to use you. You have a boo-boo? Come here. Where's your boo-boo? Your boo-boo is, well, we're going to put it on the outside of your mouth. So we're going to put oh, right there. Show everybody. What's your band-aid say? Jesus saves. But Jesus does more than just save, doesn't he? He, he you want a band-aid too? <coughs> you like one on your boo-boo? Where's your boo-boo? Oh, right there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, there we go. Oh, it's going to be all better. You might have your mommy or your daddy kiss it, and I know it'll be better, right? Okay, you can sit down. I'll give you one, too. You can take it home, and if you get a boo-boo, you can put it on there and remember that Jesus saves, right? But Jesus does a lot more than just save, doesn't he, Sean? Yes, ma'am. What does Jesus do? He loves he does good stuff for us. Oh, when you're 100 years old, you need to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. Is that not right? He got that because this week is school. You know how you can get your phone and you can focus it on your face and it'll make you look old? Well, they made them 100 years old this week. And they took a picture of it. And we showed it to Landon. And Landon said, Dakota's dead. <laughs> oh, me. Out of the mouth of that. You want another one? You got another boo-boo. Here, let's put it on the other one. Put it on the other one? Okay. Now, you, you're, you're good. You're bandaged up. Right? Okay. We're going to move on with our lesson. And listen to this. So we have Band-Aids because it keeps our wounds from getting infected. It keeps us from getting germs so that our wounds can get better, right? Listen to this. Jesus was out preaching, and he met a man who had been sick for 38 years. That's a long time. He had been sick. He couldn't walk. He was sick. And but, but, uh, but he could walk. Yeah, he couldn't walk. He had to crawl. But, 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 they, but Jesus made him walk. That's, that's exactly right. That's where I'm going. You're jumping ahead of me, little preacher man. <laughs> okay. So he was laying on the mat. And they had told him if he laid, you can, you can come look at what I'm doing. And they told him if he laid beside this pool, and when he saw this pool move, if he got in the pool, he would be healed. Now, do you think that's true? Do you think that would be true? So he had been laying by this pool for years and years and years, and Jesus saw him. And guess what Jesus said to him? <laughs> guess what he said? He said, do you want to get better? Do you want to get well? And the man came back at him. He said, of course I do. I've been sitting by this healing pool for a long time. And guess what Jesus said? Right there on the spot. You know, we just sang that song that said we need to learn to wait. And this man had been waiting 38 years. Yeah. And Jesus come along, and guess what? He healed him. Just like that. Yeah, but, but if, 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 if you know God <coughs> and Jesus, they'll, they'll love you back. That's right. 
God. He loves you anyway. He loves you all the time. Whether you're good or whether you're bad, Jesus loves you all the time. Yeah, he got a boo-boo on his, on his face. That's right. Okay. So, on this... You just have to ask for forgiveness, right? Okay, well, let, me, let Grandma be finished. Thank you. All right, so this man had been sick, and Jesus healed him on the spot. Just like this. He said, get up and walk. And guess what the man did? Walk. He got up and he walked. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That he had been sick all this time, and he got up and walked. I was passed out. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got sick one time, and Jesus healed you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Jesus, uh, this man, he picked up his mat and he walked. Well, the, the, the people in the synagogues and the religious leaders saw him walking around carrying his mat on the Sabbath. And they didn't like it. They said, you're not supposed to be doing anything on the Sabbath. That's a holy day. So the man got scared. And he said, he got scared because he thought they were going to charge him with a crime. And he said, it's not my fault. I'm only doing what the man who made me well told me to do. He said to pick up my mat and to walk, so that's what I did. I picked up my mat. See, the man was worried about being accused by man, by another man. He wasn't worried about what Jesus had done for him. He was worried about being accused, so he got defensive. What he should have said was, yes, I'm carrying my mat. I was sick. I couldn't walk. I've been sick for 38 years, and Jesus has healed me. Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Say, raise your hands. Hallelujah. This is one time you can be loud during church, so let's do it again. You can be loud, and nobody's going to say anything to you. Say, hallelujah. Jesus has healed me. <laughs> that is so good. So that's what he should have done, but he did it. And listen to what Jesus said to that man later on. Later, this is in John 5:14. Later, Jesus found that man at the temple, and he said to him, See, you are all well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. So Jesus said by him not giving him the credit, the man didn't give Jesus the credit. So therefore, he was sinning against Jesus. So when Jesus makes you well, who should you say thank you to? You should say thank you to Jesus, right? And God. Exactly. Because you should say God do everything for us. He does. He gives us everything, doesn't he? So remember when you're sick and your mommy or your daddy give you medicine. And that's a good thing that we have medicine. But remember to always thank Jesus. Yeah, remember to always thank Jesus, okay? Because he's the one that makes us well. He's the one that makes us whole again. So let's balance, say our prayer, okay? Ready? You don't want to say the prayer? I, I, want, I want all of us to say the prayer. Did you want us all to say the prayer? Okay, well, let's bow our heads. We'll hold hands. And, and I'll say the prayer real quick. Okay, let's hold hands. All right. Dear Jesus, Thank you for these precious children. And thank you for keeping them well and not sick. And let them, let them always remember to thank you for being better, for getting better. And thank you for giving us everything that we have in life. Thank you for our parents, our grandparents. Thank you for our church. And most importantly, we want to thank you, Jesus, for you being who you are. Thank you for coming to earth, dying on that cry, cross, so that we can live eternally in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> okay, let's take our, <coughs> our band-aids upstairs. <laughs> you can go upstairs because I'm ready. All right. <laughs> <coughs> You know, the song, um, In His Time, I uh, remember years ago, when I first started an open door, I was on a Saturday morning, I'd been doing an open door maybe for a year, maybe a year and a half, and then there was
just so much going on in, in the ministry and, and, and things in my life. And family, I remember I went, there, there was a, a, a worship leader from a church that was going to come and do a class. He had sent someone uh, into the program, and he just had on a simple, just had printed out that little song in his time, and he kind of sang it, and then we talked about it. And, and you know, I, the God speaks to us through his word. He's, we learned this in God's will on Wednesday night, and God speaks to us through other Christian people, but God also definitely speaks to us through Christian music, right, because it's full of God's timing, and the word I needed that day was that all these things going on in my life, that particular moment, I just want you to be still and know that it's in His time, everything is beautiful in His time, so... Uh, this uh, Sunday is fifth Sunday, and uh, each one of the fifth Sundays of this year, we're going to have some special programs. And to kick it off uh, this Sunday, we've got a couple of men from Open Door that are going to share their testimony. And also, you want to come up, right? You still want to come up first? Sure. Come on up. And then after he gets done, Johnny, you come on up, okay? So. My, my brother here is approaching his uh, last days in the program. He's kind of in a, in a transition period. Do I want to stay a little longer? I want to go. <coughs> go ahead and share what the Lord's laid on your heart. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, my name is Jay McRedman. I, uh, as Pastor stated, I, uh, I had a had a plan when I got here, and uh, I'm a firm believer of walking by faith and not by sight. And uh, the last couple of days. He's kind of been nudging me to, to maybe do something different, so we'll see how that goes. Um, most importantly, uh, the message that I feel I want to convey today is just how grateful I am. Um, I, uh, I've been in, in a recovery uh, situation for about five years now. Um, out of that five years, I was uh, sober for three. So uh, last March, I uh, had some things come about in my life that not, not necessarily tested my faith, but just, uh, you know, when we, if one thing that, that you guys hear today is that when you get out of here uh, and you move on, you know, you're back in the world and you're back in the flesh. And um, the Lord will, he will, um, he'll bless you if you're living right. Uh, in my situation, the, the farther I got back into real life, you know, the life that, uh, that the world provides for us and the blessings continued to come. And I focused more on the blessings and, and started to forget about the blesser. And, um, you know, that's a tough one because we, we want the restoration, you know, the things that we lost, uh, the jobs, the driver's license, the family, uh, brothers and sisters, children, whatever it may be. And um, you get so... You get so consumed by uh, you know getting back the things that you lost, and uh, you know we are living in spiritual warfare. Don't don't let that uh, be something that you don't take seriously. And the more we're living for God, and the more we're doing the next right thing, um, you know our, our souls may be secured, and, and we may be uh, you know on our way to heaven, but the devil still wants us while we're here. Um, <laughs> So, you know, he's, he's just as adamant about, uh, you know, keeping us in the dark as Jesus is about bringing us to the light. So, um, you know, I just wanted to get up today. Like I said, we don't, we don't know as of right now what, what holds for me in the next week or so, but um, I just wanted to say how thankful I am to Open Door Ministry. Um, I'm thankful for, you know, Donnie and Robbie and Joe and, and you guys for being supportive of me and, um, you know, I just want to uh, to say how, how grateful I am for you guys. Uh, we formed some good relationships. And, uh, you know, the, the big thing for all of us when we move forward is just staying connected and staying plugged in and uh, using each other. You know, it doesn't have to end, you know, when we get out of here. Um, you know, there's uh, a big thing for accountability. And, you know, you build those relationships in environments like this, and it doesn't have to stop. So I just want to say thanks. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. You know, I believe it was uh, Dobie Weasel said, Pastor uh, Dobie, that, you know, the day um, we get saved, the battle for our 
soul is one, but the battle for our heart has begun. So, Johnny, come on up. Yes, sir. My yes, sir, you can. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Johnny Williamson. Um, I am currently at uh, Open Door Ministries. Been there for a few days now. So, <laughs> but um, I just want to open up in uh, prayer first uh, before we get started. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for everything, and thank you for uh, allowing us all to be here and to be able to worship your name. And uh, Lord God, we just ask that uh, everything that comes out of my mouth, that the uh, only thing it does is bring you glory. And it's in your son's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, well, I am originally from Ohio. Um, I moved down here when I was 15 years old. Um, I was raised by some really, really good Christian parents, my mother and father. Like, I could not have asked for a better parents and a better life growing up. They always showed me love and affection and were always there for me. I mean, it was always great. My dad always, you know, played sports with me. My mom was always there to help me with schoolwork and everything like that. But uh, unfortunately, when I was 15, my dad ended up passing away from a car accident. So we moved down here so my mom could be uh, closer to her family. She was from the New Bern area. And then unfortunately, when I was 19, my mom ended up passing away from a car accident. Mm -hmm. So I did, not, I did not deal with those things that well. And the way I dealt with those things were, uh, I thought I could cover up all the, the pain and anguish and everything that I had with, with alcohol. And as some of y'all know, especially the ones that are there in the program, um, you know, drugs are just a temporary fix. They are, uh, they are not a long solution to the problem. And I, I was mostly really, really, really angry at God about, you know, you know, why my parents had to pass away. You know, why did both of them have to pass away from car accidents? And like, you know, you always throw up the thing, you know, what if they were five minutes quicker, five minutes sooner, like the good Lord knows everything, like you could have changed this, and you know, I still have my parents, and just just a lot of anger and animosity towards him. So that's where, you know, my drinking, you know, I try to use that to cope with that for, for years and years and years. And, um, and of course, uh, that did not turn out well, as we can all see. But the good thing is the good Lord has a plan for us all, and uh, he can take a, you know any negative situation and turn it into a positive one. So, um, and then, you know, after years of drinking, um, unfortunately, uh, my older brother, he ended up passing away from a car accident, too, when I was 34. And then at that point, I was just, like, really just absolutely fed up with God, like, just didn't want to have that, like, anything to do with them. Like, was always angry, like I said before, like, and I, I'm ashamed to say it, but, like, I had many prayers and conversations where I was cussing him up one side and down the other which was not right of me to do, but there's a lot of things that uh, I couldn't figure out that are beyond my understanding and that he will show it to me in his time. But I remember in about the summer, you know, of, uh, 2021, you know, just being so upset just from drinking and trying to drown my sorrows away. I remember praying to God, like, please, Lord Jesus, like, if there's any way that you can take this from me, like, to get rid of this addiction problem I've had, because... You know, I've tried one rehab before, I've tried to quit multiple, multiple, multiple times before, and it was just never successful at it. Like, never once succeeded, you know. Or I might succeed for a couple days, maybe two weeks or something like that, but, you know, something would come up, I'd use it for an excuse or a crutch to go back drinking and right back in the same time. <clears throat> but, uh, I've come to figure out when you are sincere in prayer and you ask God to really take something from you that is you know, keeping you from growing in Him, you got to be really careful what you're asking for. Like, there's no doubt about that. Because when you're sincere, He will answer your prayers. Because I remember asking Him and being like, please, like, just take it from me. And then, as time goes by, you know, about a couple weeks after that, some unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances happened, and I ended up in jail. And that was probably, as awkward as it sounds, was probably like one of the best things that had, you know, that could have happened to me. Because by the time that I got in there, you know, it was giving me time to get sobered up, to um, be able to, you know, really sit down and be able to talk to God about the things, you know, that were that were going on in my life, and have no outside distractions. You know, if I got upset about thinking about something from the past or anything like that, I couldn't turn around and turn to alcohol like I had done before. You know, I was I was having to deal with my problems right then and there, 
And then um, if any of y'all have ever been in jail or any time like that, um, you have a lot of time and free time on your hands to do some thinking and to do some praying and things like that. But the good thing is, you know, while I was in there, you know, um, God really looked out for me, uh, allowed me to be a, a trustee, you know, I was in the jail. You know, I got to do a lot of fixing around the things. I wasn't, you know, confined to a cell the whole entire time. Um, I ate really well, as awkward as that sounds. And uh, he just really, really looked out for me and blessed me in a lot of ways, too. Um, we were able to uh, start up some, like, our, our own little uh, Bible school study programs. And that helped out a lot with some of the other fellows that were struggling with the same things and things like that. So it was nice to be in a place where people were struggling with the same things that you were. And to be able to sit down and actually have like a good, decent conversation with people that were struggling and, you know, almost in the same boat as you were, you know, and to give me a lot of chances to plant a lot of good seeds, you know, and then give me opportunity to like, you know, really get to take all that animosity and anger and everything that I've been like just carrying with me, like that backpack that I've been like dragging around with me for years and years and years. I was able finally just to be like, God, just take it. Like, I can't do anything about this. Every time that I try to deal with it on my own, I handle it very, very poorly. And that, uh, like, I had no idea what else to do about this except for finally just, you know, release it to you, give it up to you, and just, you know, let you have it. And I will say that was the, the best decision I have ever made while I was in there. You know, my parents always had me in church, growing up in church, and then, uh, Especially, you know, after my mom passed away, I had a really good friend that, you know, got me into church, but just said, just straight away from it. So being in there, you know, gave me the opportunity to, you know, get back with him. You know, all that anger and animosity that I had, you know, I, you know, gave it up to him. So that was, you know, really fantastic. You know, I couldn't, as awkward, like I said, as awkward as it sounds, it was, you know, the best thing, you know, could have happened to me. And I was like very, very, very grateful for that. So that's when I found out, you know, whatever plans that you had, you know, those are great and fantastic, but if God has a different plan for you, you're, and it's His will, it's like, it's going to be <clears throat> Just like in the Bible where Jonah, you know, God told him to go preach to Nineveh, and he was like, nope, I don't want to do it. Like, I'm going to try to run away, and then gets on a boat and gets swallowed by a fish. And, you know, he had, he had three days to sit in the belly of that fish to think about what he was going to do and whether he was going to do God's will or not. And then I'm pretty sure when he got spat out of that mouth and up on the shores, he probably had to change a heart. Yeah. <laughs> like he said. And then look at the goodness that came from that. So you really can't argue about that. And uh, there's a couple passages on goodness that I just wanted to quote. Um, the first one is uh, Psalms 23.6. And, uh, it says, Surely goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh, the next one is Psalms 31, 19. How abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and take refuge in you. In Genesis 50, 20, uh, as for you, you meant it evil against me, but God meant it for good. And then there's a couple of mercy that I wanted to say. It was um, um, Luke 10, 37. And Jesus said, yes, now go do the same, which is, you know, there's times where, you know, you go and, um, where people show you mercy, to where you need to be understanding and be able to turn around and show that same compassion that they showed to you and the same compassion that, you know, God has always shown to you. And then the next one is Proverbs 28, 13. Uh, no one conceals their transgressions will prosper, but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. So that leads me up to my next part, which was uh, about God's sovereignty and providence. Like, that overcomes all. Like, um, we always hear when we're at Open Door Ministries, like, nothing has occurred to God that it's something just occurred. Like, you did not see something coming out of the blue. Like, oh, like, what, what was that? Like, I did not see that coming you know, for a while or anything like that. God knows every single thing that's going to happen, that has happened, that will happen. He knows it down to the minute, down to the T, or nothing that surprises him. Like, nothing, nothing gets by him. He's all-knowing, all, all omniscient, omnipresent, like every omni thing that you can think of, he, he is there. I mean, just down to the point where uh, he knew I was going to be here today talking in front of y'all. Um, he knew the person that made this little pulpit stand. He knew the tree that when it got planted, and he knew the middle that it got planted. At, that, like, it did not surprise him about anything else about that. So God's sovereignty really reigns over all things. And... Um, there's a couple of verses I wanted to read about uh, sovereignty. Uh, Ephesians 1.11. Um, 
and we have obtained an inheritance, <coughs> having been predestined according to his plan. Psalms 103, 19. Uh, the Lord established his throne in heaven. His sovereignty rules all. Uh, Romans 8, 28, which is a, a one that always stuck out to me and was everybody always told me, like, when things were going on, especially right when our parents happened, <coughs> it didn't make sense to me at the time, but the more I thought about it, it made more sense. Um, and that is, uh, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his will. And then uh, Jeremiah 1 through 5. Um, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb, before uh, before you were born. I set you apart and I anointed you as my prophet to the nations. And like it also says in the Bible about, um, uh, you know, God knew you before he formed the earth, before he formed the earth. Um, he knew you, like, it, he knew whether, where you were going to be, you know, he knew when you were going to get saved, he knew, he knew everything. So that is, there's a, a lot of reassurance and a lot of comfort to know that we have a God that knows everything, that even if somebody, like I said, you know, means evil against us, he can already see that and pre-plan everything else around to, you know, to take, you know, the, the bad or the evil that have been done against you. And turn around for good. Like I don't know anybody that can possibly do that. That can see the future. That can turn around and take you know the things that are happening, and then somehow just turn them into like a great glorious thing to mostly you know help you out of a situation, but be able to stand here and to give my testimony, you know, to try to help somebody else out, and uh, you know just bring him glory and honor. And uh, then I also learned you know while I was in there that uh, you know. When we do wrong, you know, God corrects us. And the only re reason why he does that is because he loves you. God loves you so much that he doesn't want to see you keep leaving, living the life that you are living. He wants you to do good. You know, he wants you to serve him. He doesn't want you to keep living your selfish ways and all the harm that you're dragging down and causing others. You know, because, you know, in our addictions, we always get caught up into, like, you know, what are my needs? What are my... You know things that I want going on, and you know it can. You know, of course, it affects everybody else. You know, our friends, our families, and you know our loved ones that are around us. And um, he also he always hears our prayers. You know, just like when you're um, when you when your little kids when they're crying out to you or asking you or anything like that. You know, you can always hear a difference between a cry versus like they're just trying to get a little bit of attention versus like that deathly scream where they're yelling and you know something's mad and you're like, oh gosh, you know, and that's, that's why I feel like God feels, you know, with us, you know, a lot when every time he hears us, like he loves us, he wants to answer those prayers out for us. And, um, you know, and I've also figured out sometimes God does not answer those prayers. Why he does that, I have no idea. Um, I've also learned that God's ways are his ways. His ways are above ours and that there is a, uh, you can beat yourself up and keep asking God, why Why did you do this? Why did you do that? In the whole nine yards. And sometimes God will show you the things that he's doing or the things that he's keeping from you or the reason why he didn't answer prayers. Because I know a lot of times, you know, when I sat in there for that 13 months, I'm like sitting there like, please, sweet Jesus. Like, <laughs> you know, you could just snap your fingers and like, I could have been out of here in like two weeks, you know, versus, you know, here it is 13 months later. And like, why do you keep doing this? But... I didn't see it at the time, but there was, you know, unforeseen circumstances that were going on that God was like, I'm going to keep you in here, I'm going to keep you safe, I'm not going to let you overreact because things that were going on out there, if I would have gotten out any sooner than what I did, I would have ended up relapsing, I would have lost all that sobriety that I had, and, you know, would have probably ended up in a, in a worse mess than what I was before. So, like, I'm extremely, extremely thankful and grateful for all that he's done for me when it came to that, you know, just like I can't can't thank him enough, you know, and just you know I got to sit there sometimes, especially like when things don't go your way, you know, when you're sitting there praying and you're trying to figure out like like why is this happening? Well, there's there's a reason why, and a lot of times, you know, if you just be patient, you know, wait on God and you know ask the Holy Spirit for guidance and wisdom, that he'll show it to you. You know, God, you know, God is a God of love and He cares for you. You know, He wants He wants you to be happy. But at the same time, we forget sometimes when we go to God in prayer that, you know, we're just giving Him the big shopping list and trying to tell Him, you know, this is what I want, this is what I like, I think you need to do it this way, and if this could happen on this such and such date, like everything would be fantastic. But 
that's where God's sovereignty and everything else comes into play. And that's where, you know, we've got to also have, you know, a lot of trust in God and put our trust in there. And there's a couple passages on trust I just wanted to get over real quick. Uh, one is Isaiah 26.3. And uh, you will keep, keep me in perfect peace for those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in me. And uh, John 14.1. Let your hearts not be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. And Psalms 56.3 uh, But when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. And that's where I've learned that all these trials and tribulations and everything I've gone through, they were, they were for a reason. You know, the only thing it's done was brought me closer to God. Um, it's helped me out immensely with that to where when things come up, you know, just like you know, Jesus said, you know, you got to build your foundation on like a solid rock. Or instead of like the sand and the you know sift of dirt, because we're all going to have storms. And just like Pastor Dave was saying the other day when we were there, like you're either coming into a storm, you're in the middle of a storm, or you're going out of the storm. You know, there's always going to be storms. So it's 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 a lot is where where you put your trust at. I mean, that's a lot of things too. And you know, it, it's hard sometimes because we can't we can't see why it's going on at the time. We can't see why. God's not acting as we see, but you know this the thing that we got to have our trust. You know, we got to trust in Him, and we got to you know re remove ourselves of all that doubt, and just know that you know I got to catch myself sometimes about you know well this didn't happen, but you know there's a reason why it didn't happen, and just you know whatever that is, you know if He reveals it to me, that's fine, that's great. If He doesn't. That was the one thing I've learned to, you know, accept over here, like the past, you know, few months and things like that. You know, some things he'll show you and just some things he doesn't. So, um, and just like I knew, like when, especially when I first came here, you know, Open Door Ministries, like the other places I try to get into, you know, for some reason I'd always ask God, well, I'm not getting into these places. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense, but God knew this was the perfect place for me to come. This was the perfect thing for what I needed. And um, I cannot argue about that. Um, I'm extremely thankful for uh, God opening up door, Pastor David, to uh, open up Open Door Ministries. I'm thankful for uh, Miss Daisy for uh, uh, being there for you and not giving up on you. That's the most important thing, too. Um, I'm extremely thankful for uh, Robbie and all the friendship that he's given me, especially, like, I know it had been a little bit awkward, like, when you got a sheriff's department bringing somebody in, you're a little questionable about, like, what well, is the sheriff's department this person is here? But I, he didn't throw any stones or judge me or anything like that. That was more welcome. Um, thank you for Joe for all the good cooking that he does and his sense of humor that he has. It's great. That, that man makes me laugh. And uh, extremely thankful for Donnie. Donnie's been a, a very good friend ever since I've gotten there. Um, that man knows how to fix anything. And that is also a great thing because I'm one of those, you know, that likes to be able to fix things when things break. And uh, that man right there, he is fantastic, a good godly man. And uh, I hope that God, like, richly blesses all of you. And uh, most importantly, thankful for uh, Harmony Church. Um, you guys have been extremely, extremely nice to me ever since I've been here, ever since day one. Ever since I walked into the doors, you know, everybody always, you know, addresses me and speaks to me politely. Um, and it's so hard to, like, when you come into a place like this with you having that stigmatism of being an addict, you got other people thinking that they might be judging you and things like that. But I never once felt that while I was here. Like, I felt nothing but love and, like, you know, just, you know, the grace and mercy of God just being shown to me. And I'm extremely thankful for Mr. Robert all the time to be able to go there and help you, sir. And uh, just, uh, just really thankful. We always say you're know, just thankful to be thankful. So mm -hmm. that's about all I have to say. Yeah. And I just right. I'm thankful to Johnny. I always enjoy. Uh, I've heard his testimony a few times, and it always uh, reminds me of uh, God's timing and just some of the miraculous things I've seen in his life, and that really really inspires and helps me out. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit, kind of, uh, what Jay talked about. I, I didn't even know what Jay was going to say when he was up here, but I'm kind of going to talk a little bit about spiritual warfare and the battle of our mind and what comes into our mind and what we let sit in our mind and how we develop these things. And spiritual thoughts is basically, if I had a title, I don't, but if I did, it'd be, it'd be keeping thoughts spiritual because I've... Uh, you know, the, the, first, the first Bible chapter, the verse I want to talk about is, uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And that's in the Beatitudes. That's Matthew 5, 6. 
And since I've come to open door, that's my morning prayer is that I continue to be hungry to, to get in God's word, to talk to other people about God, to come to these studies, to listen to the CDs, to uh, pay attention in the chapel when we do things, and to just always have that hunger because that's something that comes and goes and you can lose that getting out in the world. And when I lose that, I fall apart because, and that starts in my mind. When I don't concentrate on God and put God first, I start putting the world first and the, and the results of that are sometimes just very destructive. My habits become destructive. My family life becomes destructive. My friendships become destructive. My finances, uh, my work, all that stuff becomes destructive because I'm not putting God first. I'm thinking about other things. Just a little bit of background on me. Uh, I joined the Army when I was 19 years old. I'm originally from Washington State. I was raised Lutheran, uh, normal Lutheran church. I went there. I went to Sunday school. I learned about the Bible and stuff. But I didn't really understand or hear people talk about what a personal relationship with Jesus is like. I knew going to church. I knew church people. But... I didn't see much difference in them than I saw in people I saw every day. And that's one thing that I've learned coming to Open Door and through the years is we're supposed to be different as Christians than the people you normally see that aren't saved. We're supposed to act different. We're supposed to talk different. We're supposed to, most importantly, treat each other differently. And that's something I didn't really see in my home church growing up. I saw a lot of people that talked like that, but they didn't act like that. And that's not the bash those people. I know a lot of godly, loving people that I grew up with in that church. But it, it just, when I, when I got out on my own, I didn't go to church very much because I didn't, I didn't see any benefit to it, to come. So when I joined the Army uh, at 19, I, I was successful at it. I was a good soldier. But with that comes a culture, there's a culture of drinking in the military. There's a culture of partying, working hard, play hard type thing. You know, we put the hours in and we work, but we also go out and we have fun. And what my concentration was when I was there was how successful can I be at this? Uh, how much praise can I get on myself? Uh, and the more successful I got, the more I turned myself to worldly things and my ego grew and it was pride. But I had great uh, mental toughness, but it was mental toughness to achieve what I wanted to achieve, not necessarily what God had for me. I was always... Uh, striving to achieve things for a pat on the back for uh, to further my career and I didn't pay attention to the most important things which were, were God and Godly relationships I paid attention to making money making a paycheck having a good career uh, achieving more going to more schools and doing those things the problem with that is there's still a spiritual hole in your soul when you do that and you can fill that thing with whatever you want. You can fill it with a career. You can fill it with drugs or alcohol. You can fill it with sex. You can fill it with whatever you want, but it's, it's fake. It's not real. Substance comes from the Lord. And when you don't have that, you, you continue to go down that road. You just get deeper and deeper in that sin. And then your sin becomes a lifestyle. It doesn't become, it doesn't become something you do every now and then. It becomes your character. It becomes who you are. And that's who you turn into, or uh, I'll speak for myself. That's who I turn into, I know, when I go down that road. Uh, I was actually saved in Iraq in 2006. And a, a normal foxhole prayer. I mean, there, they say there's no atheists in combat, and that was me. I wasn't an atheist. I believed in God. But I didn't understand what I, I'd heard about being saved. But God knew then to put godly men around me. I had some godly men around me. And we had some uh, operations that were uh, not just a lot of bad stuff happened. A lot of uh, you see some of the worst things you'll ever see. And you experience some of the worst things you'll ever experience. And to be honest with you, I was afraid. I was never afraid of going to combat before that. But when I started thinking about my eternal life, it scared me. It really did because I didn't know where I was going. And uh, I talked to a chaplain and some godly friends and um, I became saved. I was baptized there. Uh, actually baptized in the Euphrates River. Uh, biblical times, all that stuff. And um, I felt great. I did, I did well. And 
Uh, my life got better, but what I'm going to talk about is uh, there were still strongholds that Satan had in my mind. There were still things that I hadn't conquered. And the worse my experience got there, the darker it got, the more I tried to cover those. I would let go of a lot of sin, but there were still parts of me that, uh, that were covered in that. And I'll, I'll just read James 1 8. And this, I read this when I first got the open door. And I wrote this down and I said, this is how I live. I was saved, but this is how I was living. It says, their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They're unstable in everything they do. And James is talking to Christians. He's not talking to unsaved people when he, when he wrote that. He's talking to Christians like me. That I was a Christian, but I was unstable in what I did because I still tried to have one foot in the world. I still had to have, try to have a foot in... When things would get really bad, I would turn to what was reliable to me, and that was drugs and alcohol that was reliable. It wasn't helpful, but it was reliable because I knew what it would do. And it was a comfort. That's why I did it. It, it comforted me. But that comfort has consequences. And, that, and Satan still had that stronghold in my mind. I, mean, I had nightmares or depression or anxiety or all those things that came from some of the things I did. Satan would say, I know a way we can get rid of this right now. And we can go to the ABC store and we can get rid of this temporarily. And, and I would always turn back to that. And I'd get sober for a month or two, uh, one time for a little bit over a year. But I'd always turn back to that when things got really tough. Uh, my verse today is um, 2 Corinthians 10, 35, because I, I looked at this, and when I read this, I really liked that. You know, I, I was a warrior in the civilian life, but as, John, as Paul says right here, we're human, but we do not wage war as humans do. It's the next one. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. My fleshly human reasoning is what tells me that drinking will solve my problem. That's not God's reasoning. My addiction is not a stronghold in my mind. My addiction is the fruit of that stronghold, the negative fruit of that stronghold. So what I have to do every day is I have to destroy every proud obstacle that keeps me from, from knowing God. We capture these rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey God. <coughs> that battle in my mind every day happens. And every morning I ask the Holy Spirit, who's my helper, he's my ally in that fight. Every morning I ask him to help me take my thoughts cap captive when they become negative. And every day I ask him to teach those thoughts to obey Christ instead of obeying me. Because when I obey me, I go out and I run. And when I obey godly thoughts and stay in the spirit, then I can do things like, like listen every morning and have a hunger for Christ and talk with, with guys, you know. Sit out, I mean, we, sometimes we sit out there and we have some of the best conversations just talking about the Lord among people that are, we all have a lot of the same problems. We all come from different places and have different backgrounds. But even with the staff and with the guys that I'm in open door with, we have, uh, we have a common goal, which is to not live like we used to live. And the way I had to start doing that is to start taking these thoughts captive because what I feed my mind um, grows. Uh, it's a popular saying. I think I heard a, a pastor, Alistair Begg, talk about it. He said, you know, um, a, thought reaps a, a thought reaps an action. And an action reaps a sin, and a sin reaps a character, and a character reaps a, a lifestyle. You know, the thought isn't the sin. I do with it is. If I marinate on that negative thought, and I let it cook, and I let it keep going in there, I'm incubating it until it hatches. And when that thought hatches, that becomes my sinful action. And that sinful action lowers my standard, and then I just keep lowering those standards lower and lower until I keep falling further and further away. And all that stuff... There's a line in the Bible that uh, hit me that you can grieve the Holy Spirit when you do that. That means I'm making God sad. He's not mad at me. He's sad because he knows what I can do when I stay in the Spirit, but he sees me getting pulled away and into where I used to be and into you're just falling for that old liar, the devil. You're falling for his deception. I will say this, you know, when I became saved, uh, I think someone touched on it earlier. You're also declaring war on the devil when you do that. And before I was saved, he didn't have to work so hard on me. He just kept me comfortable. But when I, 
when I became saved and declared myself as a child of God, the consequences got worse and worse. Because now I'm claiming God, but I'm doing other things. So now God's going to let those consequences happen, you know. Uh, I used to get away with all kinds of stuff before I, before I became saved, but do something while I'm saved, and I'm going to have consequences. Because God wants to teach me and put me through that trial so I can persevere and be, a, be an example for him. And not a negative example, not another tally, not another trophy in the devil's uh, trophy case. I want to be, you know, have my name written in the Lamb's book of, of, of life. And I want to be, when I, sh when I die, for God to say, well done, faithful servant. And the way I have to do that is, is capture my rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Uh, so the, the weapons I fight that with is I have to call on the Holy Spirit every day. I have to stay in God's word. And, you know, the I heard this somewhere. The root word of disciple is discipline. And to be a disciple, you have to have discipline, which means I have to discipline myself. The same way I discipline myself to achieve things in the world, I have to do that to achieve things in the spirit. So I have to discipline myself to get in the word, to learn how to pray every day. I used to be really uncomfortable praying, but now I have to do it over and over uh, and it, it improves. You, it's like a skill you can continue. And another thing, I have to guard my mind from outside ungodly influence. Uh, Pastor David mentioned music. Music is a trigger for me to set up a stronghold in my mind that can lead me down a path I don't need to be. So I have to be very careful about that stuff. It's what I'm putting into my, my mind can manifest itself in what comes out of me. So I have to be careful about what I watch, what I listen to. And I have to stay hungry, most of all, for the spirit to change me. I just wanted to, that's really all I have on this, but uh, I just can't stress enough that when, when we start down that negative road, a lot of us have depression and anxiety and all those things. God can take those away when we give it to him and we stay in the spirit. But we have to be disciplined enough to be able to change our mind while we're, while we're going through those things. And I just wanted to, you know, Thank Open Door because when I got here, those things, I, I understood the Bible and I understood a relationship with Christ, but it's the, these last little things that I have to let go, those last little strongholds in my mind that I had to destroy in order to be free. Because the, when you hold on to something that isn't godly, it, it can grow and it, it can make itself manifest itself in, in my old sinful nature, which I, I want to let go and I want to surrender. So I had to destroy those strongholds. And I just wanted to thank Open Door for the opportunity to um, reignite my hunger for the Word. And also to, to, you know, when you stay in this stuff every day, God will do things for you. God, God's working in my life every day while I'm here. And um, the staff, Robbie, Donnie, and, and Joe, you guys uh, have helped me out immensely, uh, kept me busy, and I just, uh, I learn things every day there, and I also uh, just learn how to behave and act like Christian men, and just the examples of having Christian men around me is important also, and I, I appreciate that, and I thank them for that. And for the guys here, man, I love every one of you, I love, what, I love our fellowship, and just remember, you know, if, if I need something, I know I can go to you guys, and it's the same for me, and um, you know, we fight this spiritual battle together, and we all do as Christians. And if you walk outside these doors and look around, we are at war with, with, with demonic forces. And as Christians, we're supposed to stand up and fight that. And that's what, uh, that's basically what my message is today. And I just wanted to, I'm just gr really grateful to Pastor David and, and, and Miss Daisy and at Open Door Ministries and Harmony Church. You guys have been wonderful since I've been here. Every time I've come, you've been welcome with me. You're welcome with my family. Um, uh, you know, my daughter's up there in Children's Church, and, and you guys have just been wonderful. And uh, I just, uh, it's really a blessing to have a second church home when I get when I get here that really accepts us and, and loves us and cares for us and is there for us every Sunday. And it's nice to do a little ministry to try to help back the church as well. It just, um, it just. It, uh, it fills us up, and, and we really appreciate it. And um, with that, I'll just give it back to Pastor David, and I thank you guys for letting me share.
Well, that is awesome. Somebody left their phone. Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was <laughs> now it's my turn. <laughs> Some people say I don't preach long enough. I figured this Sunday we could make it up for a lot of time. What two beautiful testimonies, all three of them, beautiful testimonies. But the most important thing for someone coming to church, for someone going down the door, is to be teachable. And that's what separates people, the people that are teachable. People that are broken and people that are teachable. Because a lot of guys will come to the door and they, they may have heard the word and they've got it up here, but, but, but I'll, sometimes they don't get to hear, you know. And I'm speaking in my own life, you know. So I think teachable, and, and all three of these men today are teachable. And it shows, amen. Didn't they do a wonderful job? Well, we're going to go right to our offering. So if it asks Donnie and. Uh, Sean. you and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you. 